Two announcements to make. One is we've got ourselves a secretary. Javier, welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for being willing to do this. Thank and, you. Uh, I really appreciate it. And uh, also today, um, I've uh, I said when uh, we uh, became a team and got elected that the uh, vice president is going to be the last person in the room. She didn't realize that means she gets every assignment. <laughs> but uh, the vice president uh, and I and all of us here have been working very hard to, uh, to pass the legislation that, uh, that is going to beat this virus as well as uh, get people back to work and uh, change their prospects. And so she's traveling all over the country uh, working that. In addition to that, there's about five other major things she's handling, but I've asked her, uh, the VP today, because she's the most qualified person to do it, to lead our efforts with uh, Mexico and the Northern Triangle and the countries uh, that uh, help, uh, we're gonna need help in stemming the movement of uh, so many folks uh, stemming the migration to our southern border. And, uh, you know, back when I was vice president, I got a similar assignment, but one of the things we did was we made sure that we got a bipartisan agreement with Democrats and Republicans to provide over $700 million to the countries in the Northern Triangle to determine the best way to keep people from coming is keep them from wanting to leave. Um, and. Uh, and the reason why so many people were leaving, we learned, was that uh, not only gang violence and trafficking and cartels, but natural disasters, hurricanes, floods, uh, um, earthquakes. And, uh, and so it's not like someone sits around a hand-union hand -union table somewhere in Guatemala and says, I got a great idea, let's sell everything we have, give the money to a coyote have them take our kids or us to the border of America, take us across, leave us in the desert. We don't speak the language. Won't that be fun? Uh, one of the ways we learned is that uh, if you deal with the problems in country, it benefits everyone. It benefits us, it benefits the people, and it grows the economies there. Unfortunately, the last administration eliminated that funding, did not engage in it, did not use it, even though there was over $700 million to help get this done. We're reinstituting that program. And there are, uh, as I said, there are many factors as to why people leave in the first place. But uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is the, uh, the source of uh, one of the reasons why we've had such a, before we took office, in the midst of the last administration's somewhat draconian policies of separating children from their parents, etc. Uh, what happened was that uh, we, uh, we found that uh, there were serious spike in the number of people heading to the southern border, even in the midst of that. And as, uh, as uh, Alejandro can tell you, is that was because there were serious natural disasters that occurred in those countries. They were coming north, and we did nothing to do any, much about it. So this new surge we're dealing with now started with the last administration, but it's our responsibility to deal with it humanely and to, uh, and, and to stop what's happening. And so this increase has been consequential, and, but the vice president's agreed among the multiple other things that I've had in the meeting, and I appreciate it, uh, agreed to um, uh, lead our diplomatic effort and work with those nations to accept re the returnees and enhance migration enforcement at their borders, at their borders. We're already talking with Mexico about that. She's already done that. We're going to be dealing with a full team now that we have to be able to deal with the problem here at home, but also to deal with it now in terms of in country. And I can think of nobody who, uh, who's better qualified to do this than a former, this is a woman who ran the second largest attorney general's office in America after the, US, after the United States Attorney General, 
in the state of California, and has uh, done a great deal of only human rights, but also uh, fighting organized crime in the process. So it's not her full responsibility and job, but she's leading the effort because I think the best thing to do is to put someone who, when he or she speaks, they don't have to wonder about, is that where the president is? When she speaks, she speaks for me, doesn't have to check with me. She knows what she's doing, and I hope we can move this along. But, so, Madam Vice President, thank you. I gave you a tough job, and you're, you're smiling. <laughs> But there's no one better capable of trying to organize this. Place. Well, thank you, Mr. President, and for having the confidence in me. And there's no question that it's a challenging situation. Uh, as the president has said, there are many factors that lead president to leave these countries. And um, while we are clear that people should not come to the border now, um, we also understand that we will enforce the law and um, that we also, because we can chew gum and walk at the same time, must address the root causes that, uh, that cause people to make the trek, as the President has described, to come here. And I look forward to engaging uh, in diplomacy with uh, government, with private sector, with civil society, and, and the leaders of each in El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras, uh, to strengthen democracy and the rule of law, and ensure shared prosperity in the region. Uh, we will collaborate with Mexico and other countries throughout the Western Hemisphere. And as part of this effort, we expect that we will have collaborative relationships to accomplish the goals the President has and that we share. I also look forward to working with members of the Congress um, who I think share our perspective on the need to address root causes for the migration that we've been seeing. And um, needless to say, the work will not be easy, uh, but it is important work. It is work that we um, demand and the, and the people of our countries, I believe, need to help stem the tide that we have seen. So thank you, Mr. President, for your confidence. Well, thank you. Thank you for willing to do it. Um, now we're going to get down to business here. And, uh, and uh, Ron, who am I turning this over to? Well, I, well uh, thank you very much, Mr. President. <laughs> I think it's uh, time for the press, our friends in the press to leave, though. Thank you. And President Biden not taking any questions at the end of this uh, little sit down that we got to uh, take a peek at. But uh, in case you missed it, you uh, may have heard him 